Take a deep breath. <coughs> Is that getting worse? I don't know about worse. It's certainly not getting any better. You always wear your mask. You're around them a lot. The more you breathe that in, the worse it's gonna get. <coughs> you can't keep breathing the same air as them. And not expect to be affected. Take a puff. It's been about three and a half years since the taking. I don't really remember much before then. They say the amnesia wears off eventually, but I don't feel it yet. Just some weird dreams here and there. How's the head? Still nothing. I had this dream. You had uh, you had giant eagle wings. You you were carrying me you're upside down by your talons. Which is a super weird thing to say to your doctor. It's not even the weirdest thing I've heard today. I know very few things for sure. I know my parents died in the car crash that took my memory. I know our world is just finally beginning to know peace. Our sovereign leader came to us when we needed him most. I know my name is A51317. It's in our best interest to try not to remember the old world. The hate is contagious. Well, keep your mask on while you're working. We need you guys in the field. If he's for us. Who can be against us? I know we must protect our new world at any cost. I know the taking purged much of the old world filth. But others rise up in their place. Many are left that would destroy our peace if they could. The Forbidden Book teaches them to hate. That's why we do what we do. Someone has to keep the evil out. I know for sure I'm no different than any other citizen. I trust our sovereign leader when he says that if he is for us, who can be against us? A51317 was saying, I've been gone or it's been about three and a half years since the taking. What is the taking? The taking we've talked about is the rapture. It's, it's not the rapture. The name of the, um, the word rapture is not in the Bible, but the Bible says very plainly in 1 Corinthians 15, 52, in a flash, in a twinkling, what is that saying? It means in a twinkling of an eye, as quick as you can blink, Jesus, when he blows that trumpet, the Bible says that his church is going to be taken out. What does that mean, his church is going to be taken out? Does that mean all churches? Does that mean when we're all in church like this, we're going to be taken out? No. See, when you're a true Christ follower, and there's a difference between, I believe, between a Christian and a Christ follower. What does Christian mean? Christian means Christ follower. But what does it mean today? I believe today it doesn't mean what it meant 50 years ago. Today, it seems like the, uh, the nation says that 80% are Christian. If that was really so, we wouldn't have the divide like we have. We wouldn't, have, we wouldn't be killing little babies that calls a, that's called abortion in the government's name. No, we would be Christ's followers. We would be doing that which Christ tells us is holy and righteous 
before him. We'd be seeing a nation that is standing on a rock called Christ Jesus, and we wouldn't see pornography literally rampant like it is. We wouldn't see broken homes rampant like it is. We wouldn't see abortion rampant like it is. We wouldn't see sin rampant like it is. And so there's a difference. And the Bible declares that there is a difference. That Christians, I always say, Christians versus Christ followers. A Christ follower is an individual that follows after Christ. An individual that looks at Christ and says, as the Bible says, to be more like Jesus Christ. There is no better life than to be like Jesus Christ. Amen? To worship him, to serve him. I tell you, God knows we're a bunch of mixed bag of nuts, like I always say. You know, God knows we're screw-ups. God knows we're imperfect. God knows that. But also, that's why Jesus Christ came 2,000 years ago, that he would, that we could call upon his name. He died on the cross. He rose from the grave. Why did he die on the cross? He died on the cross for our sins. And that as one follows him, believes in him, accepts him, within their heart. That is the church of Jesus Christ. Guess what? That means when you're a Christ follower, you go in your home, you're the church of Jesus Christ. You go to your workplace, you're the church of Jesus Christ. You go to McDonald's, you're the church of Jesus Christ. And the Bible says in a twinkling of an eye, in a flash, at the last trumpet, this trumpet is gonna resound like no other trumpet you've ever heard before. And the Bible says that for the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable, and then we will be changed. The Bible goes on and says that as soon as that trumpet blows, the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then those that remain shall also be caught up with him in where? In the air. This is not the second coming. The second coming is right at Armageddon, right after the seven-year tribulation period. That's the second coming of Jesus Christ when he comes and touches his foot's foot on the Mount of Olives. But this, this will be, I tell you, if you're walking through a cemetery when this happens, oh, Lord, it will scare you like no other. You will see You'll see bodies that were Christ followers before, bodies that accepted Jesus Christ. They're going to burst out of those graves. So if you're walking through a cemetery, I, I feel bad for you. And I mean, it's going to burst out of those graves. The dead in Christ will rise first, the Bible says, if you continue on in this chapter. And then those that remain, who are those that remain? Like if it happened right now, those that remain, those truly that are Christ followers, are going to be caught up with him in the air. We're going to be just like Jesus Christ, the Bible says. But can you imagine when that day happens? Literally think about it. When that day, the trumpet of the Lord sounds, and I mean in a flash, in a twinkling of an eye, all of a sudden, all literal hell is going to break out on planet Earth. Cars are going to be, they're going to be literal driverless cars. I mean, you're, I hope you're driving a driverless car, you know what I'm saying? If you're caught, but there will be car crashes. There will be airplanes falling out of the sky. There will be all kinds of things happening. Tens and millions of people on planet Earth are going to vanish. There will be mothers that will literally run to their to their cribs and all they will find is baby's clothes that they just wrapped their baby in. It will literally be children will be vanished and caught up in the taking. Babies, mothers will be going just crazy. Parents will think that there's like a, a kidnapping uh, uh, things that are going on and kids will be gone. It will be catastrophic things that happen upon the earth at this moment. But understand, and I, I wanna say this right to the camera, if you can zoom in on me, I wanna talk to you, because my hope always is this, not to the Christ follower 
that is listening right now. My hope is this, that maybe you'll be watching this video. I encourage you, somehow, some way, get a hold of videos, get, get on the internet right away because maybe that might be taken down later. But I, I believe that you will be, you, those that wanna be watching this video right now, I wanna say to you this, there's three things I wanna give to you that are so important if you are left behind. There's things that are going on that you can't even describe. You're, you're turning every channel on the TV set and you're seeing news reports, news reports, news reports. And they're all saying the same thing. People are vanishing. Planes are falling out of the sky. Cars are crashing. There's 50, 100 pile of cars. Things are happening all over the place. I'm here to tell you that time is short. And it's very important that you understand what to do next. Number one, hear me. Number one, you'll feel hopeless. You'll have a hopelessness that will go down so deep that you'll want to end, end your life. But I declare to you, don't end your life. You know, there are so many things and reports going on constantly, people ending their life people committing suicide, constantly, people hanging themselves. Do you realize since COVID that the suicide hotline has gone up like 10, 50%, 60%, it's just crazy. The suicides that are happening. People now, today, people are feeling so hopeless. I want to say that to you, don't feel this way, don't commit suicide. Why? Everybody's vanished. Many, many people have vanished. Only a few are uh, left behind. Then there will be millions that still will be left behind. And a lot of them think that there's some kind of alien invasion. Don't listen to them. Don't listen to them. This is a real thing. Jesus Christ, the trumpet just has sounded, and the church, the bride of Jesus Christ, has just been gone to be with Jesus in heaven. And you're left behind. Don't feel hopelessness. Don't end your life. Please don't end your life. Don't take that gun out. Why? Because there's still hope in Jesus Christ. Why is there still hope? Because that same Jesus that created this earth, that same Jesus, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, his presence is still going to be here. His presence is still going to be upon this earth. It might not be real strong, and what I mean by that is the church of Jesus Christ, it's gone. You had your chance to go to church. You had your chance to give your heart to Jesus. You had your chance to go to a church like this. People love you. People want to lift your arms up and give you hope in Jesus. That time's gone. The presence of the church worldwide is now gone. You have to rely on one person, and his name is Jesus Christ. But number one, don't commit suicide. Don't feel that hopelessness that Satan would love for you to feel, because the presence of the Holy Spirit will still be here like it was from the beginning when God created this earth. Number two, give your heart to Jesus Christ as soon as you can. Give your heart to Jesus. You, you should be doing what you should have done before. Right now, you should give your heart to Jesus. Because why? The days are short. And God will guide you through this horrific time called the tribulation. But it's really awesome what God says in his word. God tells us in his word that he is going to bring and save during the tribulation. It's going to be about the midpoint of the tribulation. 144,000 Jews are going to give their heart to Jesus Christ. In fact, the Bible says that the seal of God is going to go upon those 144,000 Jews. See, many Jews today... They, they 
didn't believe in Jesus. Remember, the Jewish people crucified Jesus on the cross. So there's only a few that are believers in Jesus Christ today, but the multitude of Jews, they don't believe in Jesus, but they're still believing for their Messiah to come. Well, guess what? At that midpoint of the tribulation, the Antichrist is gonna set himself up like God in the tabernacle there in the Middle East, there in Jerusalem. And as soon as he does that, scales will come off the eyes of the Jews. And 144,000 Jews, specifically God has 12,000 Jews from every tribe. Read that chapter in Revelation. 144,000 Jews, their number one task will be to go throughout the world and evangelizing, telling people about Jesus Christ. So I encourage you, try to listen to one of these 144,000 Jews. They will tell you about Jesus Christ. If you can't see one of them, I guarantee, probably the 144,000, probably won't be on YouTube. The government, whatever is gonna take place under the Antichrist, they're gonna try to shut up the 144,000. But there will be two, the Bible says, more than likely, the whole world will see these two. Who are the two? They're called two witnesses in Revelation chapter 11, verse three. And I will give power to my two witnesses, and they will prophesy for how long? 1,000. 260 days, clothed in sackcloths. These will be like the men of old. And guess what? The Bible is very, very clear that these two are going to be God's witnesses. They're also going to be prophesying in Jesus' name. I guarantee it. You'll be able to see it on your cell phone. You'll be able to see it on any devices. You'll probably be able to see it on your TV, on the internet. They are going to publicize, and there's going to be all kinds of videos probably shot and put on YouTube of these two witnesses. Why is that? Because these two witnesses are going to be powerful. God himself, the Bible says, brings these two witnesses down. Revelation 11:5. If anyone tries to harm them, fire comes out of their mouths and devours their enemies. This is how anyone who wants to harm them must die. The Antichrist will hate these two witnesses because they will only represent God Almighty. They will have the power of God upon them. No one will be able to touch them. I guarantee tanks, every missile, Every weapon known to man will try to come against them, but nobody will harm them. They have one goal. What is that goal? That goal is to prophesy in God in Jesus' name. Many scholars believe these two witnesses will be Elijah and Moses. We're not exactly sure, but the two that came on the uh, Mount of Transfiguration were those two, and the two, they believe, God is going to send them, but somehow, some way, I don't know who it's going to be, but God says they're two witnesses, and they will be witnesses in Jesus, witness, uh, witnessing to people, telling people in Jesus' name about who to follow. So listen to these two witnesses if you can't listen to one of the 144,000, because I believe one way or the other, oh, CNN, Fox News, all the above, will be out there videoing, camera, and put the camera on these two witnesses. You'll be able to watch them on your phone. Number three, you need desperately to do this. Get a hold of a Bible. Get one, run. If you're in our local area, run to this church. We got all kinds of Bibles. Break into any room to find our stack of Bibles. You'll find them under the chairs. Bibles are all over the place here at Gateway. Why? Because we are a Bible-believing church. We love Jesus. We love his word. It's our instruction. You will need instructions. You will need directions how to navigate 
through this horrific time. So I encourage you, relatives, Christ followers, I'm encouraging you in Jesus Christ to put away somehow in a bed stand, uh, uh, some furniture, whatever, tell your relatives, if something happens to me and you can't find, say mom or dad or an uncle or an aunt or a friend, and if I, you cannot locate me, that means I'm, I'm not just dead, but I have gone to be with Jesus Christ. They're gonna look at you and say, sure, I believe you. They are gonna think that we're crazy, but you know what? We're crazy for Jesus, amen? But I encourage you, tell them. Tell them maybe it's a nightstand. Tell them that there's a Bible there. It's very important to understand what to read in this Bible. Tell your relatives about this. Tell your relatives if at any point that this happens and people are vanishing all over the place because the day's coming real soon. I get so excited because I believe with all my heart we're gonna be a generation that is gonna be a taken out generation. And so you have to understand what to know in the instruction book and the directions you need to take in this time of a horrific time during the tribulation. See, there's seven year tribulation. The first three and a half years, oh, the Antichrist is gonna fool the world. He's gonna bring peace and security like never before. What do we see now? We see all kinds of money flying around from the government for the last year and a half. Oh man, people don't wanna work. You know, you see it, I see it. People feel real secure. Stock market's doing great. I mean, you can get a job out there anywhere. I mean, we, we see help wanted signs all over the place. It's gonna be peace and security, just like we're seeing now, that first three and a half years. Oh, why? To fool the people to believing whoever is that antichrist, whoever that government leader may be, because they're gonna be a world government type of leader that is gonna come on the scene. And so you'll have to understand what to understand, what to know and how to be led by only one book, and it's called the Bible. If you're in a hotel, if you're in a motel, I encourage you right now, open up those drawers. There's a ministry called the Gideon Ministry that we support, and I love it because the number one function and mission of the Gideon Ministry is to put God's word in every motel, every hotel on the, uh, uh, throughout our nation and through this world that will accept them. Many uh, prostitutes have given their hearts to Jesus Christ. Many executives, many people, many people that have had affairs in the hotels or motels, they've also felt so empty after these moments that they found the Bible there in the motel. We hear about stories like this all the time. And through the convicting word of the Holy Spirit, it changes them. It takes them out of darkness. It takes them out of their sin. There's no other book that can do that in our lives. This book, the Bible, it, the words are anointed. The words of God, because they're God's words alone, they're anointed. So understand, it's so very vital to understand what to do when that time comes. I encourage you, if the internet is still going on, type in IamDefiant.net. I am defiant.net. One of the reasons why we made the movie Defiant is to tell people, this is in our movie, to tell people about the Word of God. They can go to this webpage, it's a live webpage. They can hit download and they can literally download the whole entire Bible to their any device, their computer, their phone, their iPad, whatever it may be. We believe in the Bible of the Word of God. Understand, there's Bibles under your chairs. VIPs, get a free copy. If, if possibly you want two, two copies of the Bible, as long as supplies last, and if it doesn't, we'll buy some more. We love giving out free Bibles. So please, if you need some Bibles, take, take, take the Bibles. 
The other thing that some of you might think I'm crazy about, but a lot of you already know I'm crazy anyway, is um, I encourage you to do something. I encourage you to get some kind of a box before Jesus Christ comes back. And you know that old DVD player that a lot of people don't use anymore? Keep it. Don't give it to anybody. Don't give it to Goodwill or anything. If you work at Goodwill, I'm sorry. But keep that DVD player. Get a copy. VIPs, we're giving out a free copy of our Defiant movie. Maybe burn some DVD copies of series like this, of preachers preaching on the end times. But then put these copies in the box, tape up the box, label it rapture, taken, left behind, and tell your family members about it. Say, if you can't find me, there's a particular box in the mechanical room right there. It's labeled left behind. It's labeled rapture. It's labeled whatever you want to label it. Label it. Because if people know what to do, they have a better chance to make it through the tribulation. Jesus Christ, he died on the cross for all of us. He doesn't die for a select people. He even died for those that are left behind during the tribulation. That's why it's so important for us as Christ followers to tell them if they're left during the tribulation that still there's hope in Jesus Christ. I'm, I'm looking at you again. You that are left behind, what should you read? Read the book of Daniel. Read the book of Matthew. Matthew, specifically Matthew 24, 24 and 25. Read Revelation. You know, when a lot of people read Revelation now, they're like, oh Lord, I cannot figure it out. It sounds, it, it just seems so far-fetched. It confuses me, guess what? Those of you that are left behind, you'll be able to read Revelation, it's gonna start making sense to you. It's gonna start being your guide to, through the tribulation. It's gonna start letting you know what is to come. We talked about the scorpions, it's gonna tell you about how the scorpions are gonna come down. It's going to tell you about the Antichrist. It's going to tell you about these horrific things that are going to take place. It no longer will be confusing to read the book of Revelation. It will just make sense because you're going to start seeing things literally unfolding right before your eyes. There's somebody that's going to come on the scene during this time, Revelation 19.20. It says, but the beast was captured, and with him the false prophet. The beast is the Antichrist. The false prophet is going to be the one to enter in the Antichrist. Sort of like the Holy Spirit entered in Jesus 2,000 years ago. And this is talking about later on, because we all know, Christ followers know, Jesus Christ wins at the end. Without a doubt, Jesus Christ wins. And But Jesus captures the Antichrist, and that's what this is talking about. But the beast was captured, and with him the false prophet. Get this, though. The false prophet who had performed the miraculous signs on his behalf, on whose behalf? on the Antichrist's behalf. Who is this false prophet? See, the false prophet, oh, he's going to appear on the scene. I'm holy. I'm reverent. Like a lot of people in our government that always are passing bills to kill little babies, they appear so holy. They appear like, well, we're doing this for the greater. They're bringing bills right and left to promote sin. And they appear so reverent and holy before God. Some people are saying, Pastor, I can't believe you're saying that. It do not bother me a bit because the Bible talks about it. The Bible says that in the last days, 
there will be many false teachers. Don't just look at a priest or a pastor or a leader of a church as a false teacher. No, they come in multiple forms. They're on your MTV. They're on your, uh, the next uh, best movie out there. They're, they're in the government. I mean, they're all over the place. False teachers will come on the scene and the Bible says that they'll have this, like a form of godliness, but they don't have Jesus Christ within their soul. But many people will have this form of godliness. Be careful. Be careful. Because the false prophet then will come on the scene and he will appear so holy and so reverent. But I say to you, beware. He's a servant of Satan. Sacred Father, may our sovereign leader live forever. That he shall, my child. I can't believe it's you. Oh, am I so privileged to have you in my presence? Be encouraged. He is with you. Mighty warrior. I come with glad tidings, son. I'm so sorry, Sacred Father. I see Region Housing hasn't lost any of its charm. Bit of a cooking mishap? Yeah, I... Oh, I was attempting a new recipe. Be not ashamed, child. We've all burned things we've desired to try. You are 851-317, yes? Yes, Your Grace. And you live alone? Yes, Sacred Father. Uh, most of our teams do. To help maintain focus on our task, which I'm sure you already knew that. I'm sorry. Very wise, my son. The lust of this world only distract us from our unadulterated worship of him. You must seek the kingdom first. All the rest will be given to you as well. That's what we aim for, Your Grace. I hope you don't think we've fallen short of course not. We know you're a good and faithful servant. As I said, we come with glad tidings. Your time has come. He has requested your presence. Who? The King of Kings and Lord of Lords. The sovereign leader is here. Revelation chapter 13, 11 says, Then I saw another beast coming out of the earth. He had two horns like a lamb, but he spoke like a dragon. He exercised all the authority of the first beast on his behalf and made the earth and its inhabitants worship the first beast. Throughout Scripture, Satan has always tried to counterfeit God Almighty. We see in Scripture it's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. But now we're seeing Satan, his son, the Antichrist, and then the false prophet. And this false prophet will literally make, it says that he made the earth and its inhabitants Worship the first beast. Understand, don't believe him. And if you're caught and left behind here in the tribulation, I encourage you, don't believe him because he will only lead you to the Antichrist. Five one dash three one seven, I presume.
come. Follow me. Do you thirst? I'm fine, Your Sovereignty. Thank you. Drink, son. You look parched. I have many great plans for our new world. Plans to prosper us, to give us a hope and a future. And the way I desire for my plans to unfold is with the involvement of my people. Only the people called by my name will prosper. And my people must soon be sealed in my name. Do you understand what I mean, A51? No, for sovereignty. I don't. You will. Soon. Perhaps I'm stepping out on a limb here, but I summoned you here to offer you a new position in my administration. I'd like for you to take over my world preservation operations in all of the region. Everyone who is opposed to peace in the five surrounding cities will be dealt with by your team, chosen and led by you. And as you succeed, the opportunity for advancement is limitless. Your sovereignty, I, I am beyond honored. I'm no one. I don't, I don't deserve a place in your leadership. I see so much potential in you, A51. Do not doubt yourself. My power is made perfect in your weakness. A power that has yet to be displayed to the world. Do you believe that? Do you believe in my power? Don't feel like you have to answer right away. We'll be in touch. Take heart, my son. It says, and the dragon stood on the shore of the sea. And I saw a beast coming out of the sea. He had ten horns and seven heads, and with ten crowns on his horns, and on each head a blasphemous name. What is this saying? It's saying the beast, which is the Antichrist, rises out of the sea. Out of the sea where? It's out of the Mediterranean Sea, meaning the Antichrist is going to come out of the Middle East area. Very clear. And Satan will give all his power, all his authority to the Antichrist. Just like, Jesus try, just like Satan tried to give Jesus all his authority. If you read in the Gospels where Jesus was being tempted for 40 days and 40 nights, and all of a sudden, Satan showed up and tempted him beyond measure of any man or woman and took him to the highest point of the tabernacle and said, I will give you all the earth. Because it was Satan's word, it was Satan's right to give the authority, the power. I will give you all the power, all the authority. And we all know, thanks be to our Lord Jesus Christ, he wasn't tempted. He, he said, get me behind me, Satan. But this same authority that Satan tried to give to Jesus, 
he's going to give to the Antichrist. And the Antichrist is going to get sucked in. And he's going to want this authority. And just like Jesus, that same authority that he tried to give to Jesus, he's going to give to the Antichrist. And the Antichrist is going to take all the power. Satan's power, he is going to be literally embodied by Satan himself, the Antichrist. Revelation 13.3 says that the, one of the heads of the beast seemed to have had a fatal wound, but the fatal wound had been healed. And the whole world was filled with wonder and followed the beast. I'd like to tell you that one of our own has betrayed us. But in reality, we've been infiltrated by imposters. As many of you know, three days ago, I was shot in the head and confirmed dead by several physicians by the defiant terrorist known as A51-317, assisted in the completion of his treasonous act by Dr. A6 dash RB19, a local peace team physician. How'd that work out for you? These men pretended to be like us so that they could become a part of our system, all the Damn. while plotting against us. So many of these hateful groups have remained in our new world far longer than we should have allowed them to. It was only a matter of time before they did something drastic. So for the security of our new world, it is in our best interest that true citizens of the new world from here on out be distinctly identifiable. No more of these hateful murderers getting into our stores and our hospitals, our schools and our homes. From here on out, those who choose to live by peace will receive my seal on their right hand or their forehead. In an effort to expedite the process and ensure your safety, you will unfortunately not be able to buy or sell without it, but Region Peace Teams and Police will be available at every major retailer, hospital, and World Preservation Center, allowing for quick and simple access. So that those of you who choose peace can get on with your everyday lives as quickly as possible. And as some of you have suspected, I am the God of all creation. The long awaited He's savior. Gonna rise from the dead and claim to be God. And I have come up to my people because I saw your pain. I have come so that you might have abundant life. Let me release you from your pain and your death, my people. Let the God of all comfort comfort you. For I so love the world. Region 5, please, ma'am. Open that whoever up. believes in me. I hope they televise your execution. Should not perish. I want to see you pay for what you did. But have everlasting life. I have brought you everlasting life. Satan will again try to counterfeit what happened with Jesus two years, 2,000 years ago. Jesus, he died. Three days later, he rose again. He died on a Friday, rose on a Sunday. I don't know if he's going to be dead for three days, but in here in that verse of 13.3, it says that it seemed to have had a vital wound. He died. And then it says that that wound was healed. How else would the world believe in him? How else would the world literally want to worship him? They would have to see some miraculous sign. And here it's saying that he's rising, he raises from the dead. And then at that point when he has brought the world on to follow him, he literally forces everyone to take a mark, Revelation 13, 16. It also forced all people, great, small, rich, poor, free slave, to receive a mark on their right hands or on their foreheads so that they could not buy, sell, unless they have had the mark, which is the name of the beast or the number of his name. This calls for wisdom. Let the person who has insight calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. 
That number is 666. Somehow, some way, there's going to be, the Bible says that it's going to be in a, a number which is going to be on our right hand or on our forehead. They are talking right now about the chips. This is nothing new to any of us, but they've already implanted chips, especially in the fatty area or in the wrist area. They've implanted chips within foreheads. And our bodies are so that they have formulated and created these chips from our body heat to make these chips operate. Chips sound very safe. They sound the wise thing to do with little children. So they're, if they're kidnapped or animals or dogs or whatever, we don't care about the cats, but the dogs or whatever. <laughs> chips just seem to be the way. We're not positive though. But it's saying that there is going to be a mark that is forced. Interesting how these mandates are forcing people to do something that we don't want to do. Some people, it's, I have said in through this series, it's not about the vaccine to me. It's about the mandate to me. It's conditioning people to be forced to do something in a free land, America the free, forcing people to the point many people are losing their jobs. And that's wrong. The mandate's wrong. What is it doing? It's conditioning people to eventually be so used to the government forcing people to take something else. In this case, it's called the mark. Cash <laughs> will be obsolete, literally obsolete. Can you imagine all that money that people have fought for, died for, worked overtime and you've lost marriages over, you've lost children over? Meaningless. Just paper. Year 2023, Sweden, the country of Sweden, they're going totally cashless. Our country is not far behind. It's interesting. You're watching all over the place, like I am, everywhere we go. Coin shortage. Is there really a coin shortage? Or is it just that our nation is trying to condition us to go cashless. Everything is coming up to one thing. Jesus Christ is coming back real soon. But I'm, I beg you, anybody here that's left behind and you're watching later on, I beg you, don't take the mark. Because if you continue to read in Revelation, those that take the mark, their souls will be doomed to hell. They won't be able to repent like we can repent right now of our sins. Their souls will be doomed to hell if they take the mark. And in order to save your life during the tribulation, you're gonna to have to lose your life in order to save it. Thank you, Lord, for another day. Come on, Esther, take a deep breath. Thank you, Lord, for another day. 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 <laughs> Run up in there. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for another day. We are blessed to have been counted worthy. I had an incredible dream last night, Esther. They're coming. I believe they're here already. Finish strong, sweetheart. Finish strong. What? Who? Oh. When peace like a river attendeth my way. Rachel, who's here? When sorrows like sea billows roll. 
Rachel. Thou has taught me Rachel. to say What could I say about Sam? Another week without food. I have food to eat you don't know about. Search the cell. What'd I do with him? He could take her spot. She's not coming back. What are you doing? Sovereign leader isn't here yet. And Lord haste the day. Don't understand. I'm not gonna have an uprising on the day we're understaffed. When the fate shall be sight. Walk. Where is he taking her? Rachel! Rachel! Revelation chapter 20, verse 4 says, And I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded because of their testimony. Testimony in who? Jesus. And because of the word of God. I wish I could tell you something if you're watching and you're left behind. But the only way pretty much you'll probably be able to make it into heaven is to be beheaded. See, 2,000 years ago, John the Baptist was beheaded. The Apostle Paul were beheaded. Multiple Christ followers in days past had been beheaded. And it's hard for people to comprehend that today people are being beheaded, but this is very prevalent in the Middle East right now. People are being beheaded all the time in the name of Jesus Christ. Around our world, over a half a million people a year are being martyred, being killed in the name of Jesus Christ. I like what the Message Bible says here in Revelation 12, 11. They defeated him through the blood of of the Lamb and the bold word of their testament. The bold, the bold word of their testament. You don't see that a lot today. People don't have bold words of their testimony today. It's sad. I've been looked at throughout my years as a pastor when I preach about the end times People have mocked me. People have thought I read from a crazy book. I had a lawyer tell me one time as I was sharing with him that Jesus Christ is coming back real soon and talking about the tribulation. And he said, man is too smart for that. That will never happen. I talked to him after COVID happened. And he was saying, this world is falling apart. What is happening? Those that mocked Jesus Christ and spat upon him upon the cross, they're not laughing right now. People have to be bold especially during the tribulation, bolder than you've ever been bold before. And if you're left behind, I'm here to tell you, be bold for your testimony. Today, in the Middle East, there are these that are going up to individuals and saying, 
you renounce, and they're holding the machete right at their throat. I have seen horrifying videos of this. They're putting the machete right up to their throat, and they're saying, if you don't denounce Jesus Christ, we want you to denounce him right now, and I will not take your life. And they say, we will not, I will not denounce Jesus Christ. He is my Lord and Savior, and they cut their head off. That right now is happening in the Middle East. And in a moment, that can happen worldwide. That the word says, through the blood of the Lamb and the bold word of their testimony, they weren't in love with themselves. This world is so in love with themselves so in love with their pleasures, so in love with what they want to do. And here, the only way, and I'm sorry, I can, this is the only thing I can tell you if you're watching, the only way is you got to stop loving yourself. Humble yourselves before God and say, Lord, you are my king, you are my Lord. You are the only thing that I want in, in my life. I live and I live only for you. When you say that, there is not any self. Self is crucified. And I'm no longer living for self, but I'm living for Jesus Christ. And that means everything I do on social media, everything I do behind the scenes, everything I do in front of people is to give God glory people are going to have a hard time. They have a hard time now. What makes you think they're going to, it's going to be easy during the tribulation? People aren't hearing the messages like this any longer. Who knows? The internet could be put down, shut down at that point. But one way or the other, the Bible is very clear that they weren't in love with themselves, but they were willing to die for Christ. Are you willing to die for Jesus? Do you love him that much? I've always said I don't want to be Americanized. All I want is Jesus in my soul. All I want is Jesus in my heart. All I want is a life dedicated to the one who died for me, Jesus Christ. And people in the tribulation will have to not love themselves and they'll be, have to be willing to die for Jesus Christ. I can't imagine literally willing, willing to die willing to put life before anything and say, Lord, you are my number one. You are, you are everything to me. There is no way I want to live this life for you. And I'm sorry to tell you, but during the tribulation, if you're caught, try to escape the Antichrist as much as you're able to. You're not going to be able to get food for your children. You're not going to be able to get food for yourself. You're, but try to escape them. But if you're caught, be willing to die. But for one, Jesus Christ, please don't take the mark. Don't take the mark. But when you're willing to die, you're going to meet Jesus. And you've got to be willing to lay down your life for him. But instead of doing that, why don't you lose your life right now for him? Why don't you lose your heart for him right now? Why don't you give your life to him right now? You that are watching online, why wait until then? You know why? Because if more than likely, if you can't do it now, you're probably not going to be able to do it then. I'd like for you to bow your heads with me. And I ask you in the name of Jesus Christ, whoever that may be. 
Maybe you're an individual that you have called yourself a Christ follower, but then you've been doubting your own heart with God because you have put self so much before. God, Jesus. Maybe you're that individual that you're watching online or you hear my voice on this campus that you know you have tried everything. You have tried everything to bring pleasure to your life and it's always a dead end, dead end, dead end road. Well, I'm here to tell you, there's no dead end road when you serve Jesus. It leads to eternal salvation and eternal life with God. This is not life, people. This is just a test pattern. Real life is to come if you know Jesus Christ. Maybe that's you today. Maybe you need to turn your life over to God. Maybe all you need to do is say, Jesus Christ, come into my heart. I believe in you, but more than that, follow him. And today, you have that opportunity. And I ask you, from the front to the back, to the left, to the right, if you want to give your heart to Jesus, if you want to rededicate some things in your soul to Jesus Christ, I encourage you right now, just lift that hand up and say, Pastor, remember me in prayer right now. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you back there. Thank you up front. You're online right now watching. Man, I encourage you, type in there. That's me, Pastor. I give my heart to Jesus. Thank you back there. Anyone else? Thank you over here. Anyone else? Thank you back there. Anyone else? Thank you back here. Thank you up here to my right. Anyone else? Anyone else? Thank you. In the name of Jesus. It's all in the name of Jesus. Shall we all stand up together? Jesus created you for a purpose. He has created us for a purpose, not to go to hell. There's no party in hell. The party's in heaven. The party's in heaven, and this is nothing but a test pattern. Test pattern in life. Who are you gonna serve, the things of this world, which is Satan, or the living God that loves you, created you, that died on the cross for you? Satan hates your soul. He wants to just give you all kinds of pleasure. He wants to blindside you with everything that literally fills you for a moment so he can just get you in a place called hell. But Jesus has created you for a purpose. But I'm not about ready to tell you there's no fight. There's a fight there. It's not easy being a Christ follower because we're very imperfect. We didn't come out of our mama's womb just getting ready to serve God. You ever talk to a two-year-old? I'm telling you. That's why they call them terrible twos. Feel like little demons running around sometimes, my grandkids. No, 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 no. Jesus Christ, when we have him in our hearts, it's, it's an incredible blessing, but it's a, it's a fight. It's fighting temptation, fighting the things of the world, fighting and doing the right thing to give God glory. That's why I tell everybody, Man, when you mess up, you fall down, get back up, brush the dust off, repent to the Lord, keep going straight. What is it? What is he? He's already taken that to the cross. He's already nailed those sins. He loves, though, when we live a repentive, humble life before him. And he tells us that he takes our sins and throws them into the sea of forgetfulness, never to hold them against us again. Praise God that he's taken our sins away. All he is looking for is a humble heart saying, I've tried to do this life without you. Now I want to do it with you. Help me. Help me. I encourage all of us, all of us to say this prayer together. This is an encouragement as we say it together as a family to these that want to give their heart and rededicate their heart to Jesus Christ. Let's say it together. Dear Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. Thank you to Jesus for the cross. Thank you for dying for me. Thank you for your resurrection power. And oh Lord, help me to be bold with my testimony 
because I love you and thank you dear God for loving me back in your precious name and everybody said amen let's give the devil a black eye hallelujah